You know, kids these days are only thinking about their Stanley Cups and their sourdough bread kits. They're not thinking about cool, creative ways to play a one, six, five, four chord progression on guitar that'll change their lives. No. So that's why we're going to focus on that today because there's a lot of stuff out there preoccupying the masses and not a lot of this going on. So this is going to be the most famous chord progression pretty much in the history of popular music that we're going to do in the most beautiful key, the key of A, show how to use it and do it in a creative way that you've probably never even tried before. You're going to learn so much. So it's going to sound like this. Again, this is just an A. We're gonna move this around, but let's see what we're doing here, all right? You've probably played a, a one, six, four, five in the key of A, like A major, F sharp minor, D major, E major. But again, that's that, that's your daddy's chord progression. This is gonna be new cutting edge stuff. Not this Stanley Cup nonsense, which I could go on for a whole other video about that. We're gonna start down here, okay? So we've got kind of like the the middle part of a bar chord, but you don't have to bar anything, which is great. So I've got open E, 7A, 7D, 6G, 5B, and open E. So it's a very E-ish A major chord, okay? Right there, not a bar chord, easy to do. I kind of think of it like an F major 7, it would be like the first time I used this shape. But just line it up with your pointer finger on the 5th fret, okay? And then your hand is already in position to play a much easier and better sounding version of F sharp minor, where you just move it to the 2nd fret now, and then put your pointer finger on the G string, lift your middle finger, so now it's open, 4, 4, 2, open, open. And then again, this isn't technically just an F sharp minor triad, it's actually much improved because we have the open B and E strings up and out, right? So, just right there, this has a one to a six, and again, one being in the key of A, the first note, the first chord, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, the sixth chord, sign up for my Patreon if you wanna learn more about that. One to six. Already it sounds awesome. It sounds like you're grooving, right? Uh, the, kid, the kids don't get this. Uh, this is why you need to learn this right now. And let's make this the next trending thing. A little bit of educational. Trend it in the right direction. And not some of this nonsense with sourdough. Why is sourdough having such a moment right now? Can we all agree it's actually the worst bread? That's a hot take. <laughs> and I'm going to make a lot of enemies from that. But I do believe it is the worst of the breads that I commonly eat. Not a sourdough fan. But hey, more power to you. A. To F sharp minor, and then guess what? Right from here to this D major seven. Now again, you probably played D major like this, open two three two on the highest four strings. But if you just go open two two two, that's the four chord in the key of A, A B C sharp D as a major seven chord, which I think sounds even better. Again, as you can tell, these are just my opinions <laughs> based on no actual popular content. But there's a sixth chord that lines up right with the four chord. Now this is gonna come in in a more important way when we start changing keys and kind of doing this in a transpositional way. But that move right there. The sixth chord to the four chord. Okay, so one. Six, four, five. And again, this isn't even that fancy. This is just a D major chord, but two frets higher. A lot of people don't know that you can play an E major as a D major, just two frets higher. D, D sharp, E. It's kind of wild, the lack of this chord being represented. I feel like I've never in the wild seen somebody play an E major chord like this. When I mean, you know, different strokes for sure. But again, this is gonna come in handy once we start transposing it because we're gonna start connecting the dots and making kind of like touchstones from these. Like I got this first one. I always think of my pointer finger because that is where the root note in a traditional bar chord would be. So even though I'm not playing it as a bar chord, I kind of think of it there as a shape 
or a position to kind of maybe get into the major scale, something like that. But I'm gonna keep the same form, back it up to the sixth chord, which is where the minor pentatonic shape is. And then I'm just gonna flatten it down to the four chord. And then I'm gonna drag this up to the five chord. Okay, so one, six, four, five. One, six, four, five. A different flavor of it that'll come in handy. In fact, if you have that progression in this key or any other key, which we're just about to show, you can kind of just go back and forth. Like maybe the first time to, to make it more interesting, you do the cool way. And then the second time, So you have a little bit of variety in between the two things, okay? So, now let's talk about how we can change this around. The last thing I do wanna talk about in this key is when you go from that four to five, one thing that I like to do a lot is because this is that minor pentatonic hot zone kind of area in the key, I'll go from a four chord to a five chord like this, right? So there's that D major seven chord, and then instead of going all the way down, to that D-shaped E chord, I'll just get my pinky and my ring finger, which again, is like the pentatonic scale, right? Just go from here to here, and then I can even take the root note, which would be the D string right there. So now I've got, I'm skipping that, I'm skipping or just playing open, E and A, and then going two, four, five, right? One, six, four, five, okay? Now, let's do it in a very traditional key, the key of C, all right? So basically what we can do is we can move everything three frets higher, but now we're doing much different chord voicings of chords that are probably more popular, maybe stuff that you've already seen before, right? So one, six, four, five, and C. One and C is C. Six, C, D, E, F, G, A. Six is minor, A minor. Four, C, D, E, F. F major, five, C, D, E, F, G, okay? So C major. A minor, F, G. You've always, you've already played these. I'm sure you've played this. If you haven't played this, that's ridiculous, right? But let's do the same thing with these chord shapes. So let's take that A, and now I'm gonna line it up with the eighth fret because I know the eighth fret on the E string is C. So here's my C major chord. I can still get the E, open E strings in here because E is a note in the key of E if I wanna. Then back it up. Now this has a much different sound, right? Because now we have an A minor spot, but with that B in there. And it's like, oh, that creates kind of like a cool sound, like a minor nine type sound to be what we call that. And then I have a couple options here, right? Remember, this is that spot where we just laid straight down in the left half of minor pentatonic to get that minor uh, or that major seven four chord, right? Now, if we just do that, we're really just getting like a minor chord here, right? But we can grab the root note and get this, which I think is beautiful. And this is the four chord, is a major seven chord, okay? So this is the one alteration I'm making from C major to A minor to F major. And then I can go do the same thing. Remember, before we just added that and there's a G major, a higher version of a G major in a D shape where my root note, I'm thinking of just the eighth fret on the B string, okay? Higher voice G major, lower voice G major. And again, this isn't, this doesn't just have to be this chord progression. This can just give you options for jumping around in between chords. One thing that happens when I get like super bored is I'll just kind of like start swapping chord progressions out. Like if I'm just playing C to G, I might be like C, G, C, G. Like right there, so I'm going from like one G to the next G to the next one to the next one to the next one. So kind of having some kind of method for seeing how these track all over the fretboard, I think is kind of important, right? So again, we've got that C major here. I'm taking what I remember about Stanley Cups right here. Why Why are they so, why do kids like Stanley Cups? Do kids drink water nowadays? Back in my day, we didn't drink water. Still not drinking water. I'm holding, uh, 
I'm really thwarting a lot of the evidence of the medical community right now by refusing to adhere to these strict guidelines about like drinking water and sleeping and stuff like that, but. C major, A minor, four chord, five chord, right? C, A, F, G, C, A, F, G. Now, what sounds better? I mean, that's totally up to you, right? I think you have a little more variety in choosing between these chord voicings, but the most important thing is that you're, you're developing an awareness for the fretboard when you do this kind of thing, right? Instead of just getting around in the same old kind of position right here, now we're forcing our hands to be like, all right, well, I know this connects with this, and that connects to that, and that connects to that. And no matter what you're doing, maybe you could start maybe like soloing, and then be like, all right, maybe I want to start with like a triad here. And then I just, oh, I know I can always go back three frets and get into minor pentatonic. And then if I want something pretty, I can make that a uh, major seven chord. And then I can slide it from here to a G, to a G, to another G, to another G. But eh, it all starts with understanding how these chords connect. And that's why I think this is a really great progression to practice with this. So thanks for watching. If you want to be a, a true legend, sign up for my Patreon because if any of this is over your head, I go through it in painstakingly slow detail. Maybe painstaking is the wrong word to promote my, my side hustle Patreon. In glorious, fun, slightly slower tempo over on the Patreon because it's like hundreds of guitar lessons that are sequential. So you start from the very beginning and then kind of work your way up. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, let me know if you have any questions. I'll talk to you soon. All right. This is the epilogue of the video. Jared here is a bit of a sourdough connoisseur, and he would like to say a few words. Well, on behalf of my wife, I want to defend her. She makes sourdough. She's like the sourdough queen of Las Vegas. She's actually. awesome. Uh, yeah. And her bread is great, too. She's developing a good technique. Okay, all right. And... Keep it. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. What's, okay. what's the... <laughs> well, you'll just never be able to enjoy, like, good bread, because the best way to enjoy sourdough is sliced, toasted, with some butter on it. Okay, see, I'm a vegan, so that's why. That's that's your defense of sourdough. Is it just needs butter? Well, it just needs a little butter. It's just it's just dry bread, man. I guess it. Okay. All right. So, all right. But the argument against sourdough. The ar the argument against sourdough is it's good for like maybe five minutes out of the oven, no. and then it hardens into like this. No, the crust hardens. The okay. Inside, the inside's good. Or you can keep it in a little container and keep it keep it like soft a little bit. Okay, all right. But one thing I don't like about sourdough yeah. is I'm going to end up like Billy Joe Shaver like, missing, <laughs> missing fingers. Because <laughs> every time I cut into that thing, it's you, a you, risky you, game. It's, it's like, like ah! Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a high-maintenance yeah. bread. I might lose a finger. It's too much. Yeah. And there's, the, if there's crumbs everywhere. Yeah, but you just... Wheat bread, I don't have to worry about crumbs. There's a lot of crumbs. Sweet. Listen, I have a bit of a crumb problem, <laughs> naturally, as is. Throw it out. Anyways, this has been the defense of sourdough. Thanks for watching. Now I'd like <laughs> to talk about no, Stanley no, Cups. No, next, no. <laughs> Nalgene's the worst. Stanley Cup is better. <laughs>